Hello, welcome to 50 Questions Friday for, gosh, July 26th of 2024. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we're going to go ahead and drop into the heart space here, and then we'll do a check-in with everybody. Um, so if this is your first time here, please do drop anything on the chat tab. We have some great people that show up to help answer questions. And then if you do have a question, please do drop it on the question tab. All right. So we will settle into the heart space and step into this space that we create. So going to the physical heart, and imagine taking a breath from the earth, breathing in that light, that supportive energy of the earth up into the heart. The second breath, take in that breath from creation, source, soul, creator, God, you, breathing in that light of you into the heart. The third breath, breathing in the energy of earth, the energy of creation, bringing them both together within you, and then sending them right back out so you become a column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. And in this beautiful space that we all co-create. Hey, Alan. Hey, Marsha from the North Carolina coast. Hey, Kat. And hey, Ray from Virginia, good to see you here. Christy from Colorado, Connie from Maine. Um, and again, I appreciate you guys all being here and bringing your questions today. We'll go ahead and start with, um, gosh, we'll start with some announcements and then we'll move on to questions from the internet. So let's see, announcements. Ah, we have some really cool new bangles coming out here. Nah, they're actually out today. So for those of you who are watching, we do have new bangles. They have not been publicly released, but they are on the website. And you can get the 14% off sale still today. So if you want to get the new bangles on sale, um, they are available. So these are called the Expansive Light Bangle. Now, when um, this new expansive light came in, I ended up making myself, you know, I've showed you guys the um, Gaia sphere that I created that had that expansive light in it. I wore it as a pendant for nearly a month, but I also wore these silver bangles that I created. Now we're not going to make silver anytime soon. Um, this 10 gauge wire is expensive to make the bangles in. We'll eventually invest in that and we'll see how well, the copper bangles go, but here maybe in a month or two, we'll have the silver. But I made the silver bangles with that infinite light just to hold that energy so that I could integrate it before I could put it into the tools. Now, I don't use the tools a lot actively. I use our tools passively all the time. The tools are everywhere. I'm wearing things. But for the actual energy work, I usually just do the consciousness work, you know, the meditations. But I actually laid down here about three weeks ago or so, and I used a pair of these. So I use them in twos and just placing them on the body when you lay down at night is pretty profound. And I do this when I lay down at night because, you know, at night when I go to bed, I go into the heart space. I just really check in with myself. Man, I tell you what, I have the energy of this expansive light is so different than any of the energies that we've come through with before. Now this expansive light, it simply brings in your light more and expands it. And when your light expands, it expands into your entire world. And so what this does is it's just like the, the larger chambers that we create, the newest chamber is that it brings in your light more and expands it into all of your creation. These I feel are doing it more than what that largest, that large new chamber does. Um, these, when you just totally step back, you're just in the heart space, you surrendered, you just kind of let go of everything. Um, you're just in that space of receiving, of allowing. 
um, of trusting your light and your soul. And when you are in that space of allowing, of receiving, and you work with these tools, these expansive light tools, it is pretty amazing because it just comes in and smooths everything out. Um, the aches, pains, the mental, the everything, it just brings more light, just harmonizes and smooths out your world. Um, so I am pretty blown away by this expansive light energetic. And so we have it in the bangles. Now the bangles that we have, the large size are the ones that I'm wearing is the same size as our water rings, just to give you an idea. We also have the bangles in the small, which are the 222s, um, 222 millimeters. Now these specific ones are our size small of our bangles, of our light bangles. Um, so these will fit the majority of American female wrists. Um, and these will fit the majority of male wrists, uh, hands. So anyway, with these, again, with all of the rings, you can actually create a third field with these to where, and this is the way all the rings are, especially the healing hands. The healing hands are some of our more potent rings, but these are far beyond the healing hands on what they're doing. The healing hands are amazing because they bring in that connection of you as a central sun of creation in all creation as you. These, these do that as well, but they do it in a whole different way. They bring in the light of all that you are, the wisdom of the lifetimes, the soul, all of that. Um, pretty amazing bangles. So we do have these um, expansive light bangles, size small and large. We make them in a single or a pair. Every time you stack another ring with a ring, it increases the potency by about 23%. I had this huge stack from the shop. Oh man, I tell you what, it about it about floored me <laughs> just be, in a beautiful, good way. Um, just because I had a whole stack of those rings between my hands and it was intense. But um, again, the expansive light bangles, small and large. Um, we were able to actually get these at a pretty decent price. We run these through a roller, roller mill first. And let's see if we can get the camera to focus here. But basically, these are flattened in a roller mill, so that we call it a comfort grip. Um, so there's just an oval flattening that occurs with these after we twist the wire before we cut and make the rings. So anyway, that's one of the announcements of something new. Um, the other thing that we're doing, you guys, is we're actually moving everything here out of the studio. This studio is going to get emptied except for we'll probably leave the large the largest pyramid in here but um we are actually creating an airbnb that has all the chambers in it except for the 13 footer and because we have people that come to the studio often to go through the chambers and we're just going to set up an airbnb one, we want to clear out this space because we're going to start doing our monthly gatherings. We've done local gatherings here for years. We stopped doing them because they got too big. But we're going to start doing monthly gatherings here again, bringing in Brenda, the singing bowl, channeling, um, and then some energy work. And then we're also going to be opening up the studio here to do workshops that we're going to, instead of traveling all over the world doing workshops, we're going to bring people here. And a few of you will have an Airbnb to stay in. So anyway, that's another announcement that I'm pretty, pretty excited about. That's probably still going to be another month or so. Hey, Connie from Milwaukee. Hey, Kim from Oregon and Kim from Virginia. Awesome. Thank you guys again for being here. And again, you can put your questions on the questions tab. I see we have a few questions up there. I'm going to go ahead and get started with questions from email. All right. And thank you for bearing with me while I find these questions for email. All right.
Oh my goodness. Thank you for your patience. All right. So one of our questions here, how to use the wand for clearing places and people of negativity. So the wisdom wand is by far my favorite wand. Now the wisdom wand you can use to anchor columns of light, just like you do with the golden fire and light wand. Now, how to use this to clear, to bring light, to clear other people and places. Um, you know, as we really step onto this path, we begin to realize that it's not our business to really do a lot of work with other people. That true compassion is allowing a person a path. But with that said, what we do is we bring light to that space, to that person, so that then they can choose other potentials instead of being stuck and being stuck in that dense box of energy of limited potentials. When we bring the light, it illuminates all of these other potentials. So what this does is it we hold space when we bring light to another or to an environment. We are not inflicting our hmm, desires and our what we feel is right. We are not inflicting that on anybody. What we are doing is we are bringing a light a light to remind them of their light, of their divinity, and to help them step out of that space of limitation that they were in. So just want to make that clear that in the work that we do when we work with light, we're not inflicting that. We are simply holding a space for others to step into something different. So with that said, how do you create a field with the wands that would be anchoring columns of light? So using the wisdom wand um, is one of my favorites to anchor the columns of light. Now on the wisdom wand tutorials, we, gosh, somewhere there is, and I believe it's on the wisdom wand product page that we talk about anchoring light. And it just basically goes through, helps you attune to all the energies and then when you anchor that column of light with the wisdom wand energetics, you are bringing all these other fields in. Now, when you bring these fields in and these columns of light, it'll cross over ghosts because basically anybody that's within the field, it brings in their light more. It brings in their light, their soul to do the sacred heart activation, which does all the healing and the clearing for a ghost or a wayward, and it simply takes them home. Now for a human, again, it just opens up the field for them to choose differently because they're stuck in this limited potential box. And when you bring in your light, when you drop that column of light, it just dissolves that box so that they can step into something different if they choose. Again, this is between them and their soul. So, but with the environment too, now when you drop columns of light into the environment, it is amazing. It can clear old dense energies that are stuck in the earth and in buildings, spaces, places, and all the people that are within there. So the columns of light are one of the best ways I feel to use the wand. Um, and then what are other favorite wand applications? You know, to me, the biggest thing when using the wisdom wand is for 18 months, I was very self-aware, self-conscious of anything that would come up into my awareness, whether it is an emotional reaction to something that occurs or whether it is an old thought pattern or process that I notice or just uh, a nagging, a nagging feeling voice. Anytime any of that comes up into your awareness with the wisdom wand, you simply take a breath to go into the heart space 
you bring your awareness to whatever it is that came up, whether it's this old thought pattern, and you just imagine this old thought pattern, and it is nothing but energy, you imagine it, you imagine just simply taking that breath in, bringing that old thought pattern, that old energy into your field, where it goes to wisdom, it goes to soul, it's cleared, harmonized, completed, done. That is my favorite application for the wands is to release the things that do not bring me joy or no longer serve me. Situations, things, thoughts, people, everything. That's my favorite wand application. All right. So we're going to go to the next question here. Let's see. I ordered the Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator because the write up says. It's compact, sturdy. Can you kindly mention how best I can benefit from it? The new energetic Gaia is a little more expensive for that reason I chose the Divine I Am. So the Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator is still a phenomenal one. That one is one that you can simply set it and forget it. You can have it in your space and it's going to help to release those traumas through lifetimes. It's going to help to release the energies that no longer serve you. Um, so that divine I am generator, that divine I am is the energy of the soul. Um, now, all of the tools that we create now also have that expansive light energy in it. So that divine I am tensor field generator also has that newest energy. How to utilize this tool best? Um, the generators are great ones to put your intentions into. You can simply hold it voice your intention into it. Now, when we, with any of the newer energies that we're working with, when we put our intentions into it, we don't go in and go with details. And this is exactly how I want it to look and the outcome and all of that. Again, we simply are bringing more light and awareness into it, which expands and opens the field. Um, so with the divine I am generator, just simply sit with it, hold it as well, and do the same processes like we did with the wisdom wand. When you're holding that generator and anything comes up into your awareness, you're like, okay, that situation or that reoccurring pattern I'm complete with, it doesn't bring me joy. It's not serving me. So I'm going to simply imagine that. And I'm going to imagine taking that breath in. And as I stand in my power, in my heart, I'm standing here with my light. When I take that breath in and I bring that pattern or situation to me, then I transform it. Me, my light, I am that I am, all that I am, my soul. That transforms the energies in the situations. So truly, your light is what is doing all of the profound work with these tools. These tools simply hold the spaces and help to hold those structures, those energetic structures and patterns to better release or clear or whatever each of those specific tools are for. Again, the divine I am is all about the releasing and the bringing in of your light more. So that's actually a really great generator. Um, and again, you can actively use it, holding it or just set it and forget it. I, you know, do both for sure. All right. And thank you too, for the support for yourself and Twisted Sage on getting those tools. All right, we're gonna go over here to our questions tab and see what we got going on here today. Um, Hi, Brian. I'm planning to make a grid of the Metatron's cube with 13 pyramid grid points in the slab of my house. Do I have to put a north direction point or it doesn't change anything? And according to my layout, I'm not covering the entire surface. Okay, so with the quantum grid points <clears throat> and with any of our pyramids that we create, they do not have to be aligned to magnetic north. Now, it's the Egyptian pyramids that rely on the geomagnetics to power them. Now, the 60-degree pyramids, they are just simply connected to that crystal sun of the earth. 
So the 60 degree pyramids, the quantum grid points, do not rely on the geomagnetics of the Earth, so you do not have to align them with North. And as far as not having your entire surface covered, so like let's say your grid points that you're putting into your concrete slab of your house, they don't extend to every corner. It is okay because basically that field expands. It expands to the space. So even if you used one grid point in your concrete at your house and you place that in the center, that will energetically expand to cover the whole space. But it's nicer when you actually grid it out um, because you're bringing, you're bringing a lot more to it when you're using those multiple grid points. So, yeah, they do not have to fully encompass the house physically because energetically they will expand to cover the entire home. Is it better to add four more pyramids to the four corners of the house? So, you know, really, again, you, you really don't need to. Um, I like the idea that you're going there with the 13 grid points. I think that's pretty fantastic. Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about actually having the, the quantum grid point pyramids in the corners. Um, again, you'll, you'll have your whole space covered. And as for the house's electrical system, I was thinking of putting a Wi-Fi ring around my main meter feed. Well, I have to add a smart meter electrical clearing disk in a socket. So, no, if you use the Wi-Fi ring, the Wi-Fi ring and the smart meter clearing disk are the same energetics. So you can use the Wi-Fi ring anywhere on your electrical system or the disk, the plug-in or the stick. So either the Wi-Fi ring or that disk, you can place on any electrical outlet, on your electrical panel, or on your incoming electric. Any one of those places is going to work absolutely the same because when once that field of the ring connects into your electrical circuit of the home, it follows that electrical circuit of the home. And so the whole electrical circuit is harmonized. Um, and so it doesn't matter again where you place that. So the answer, yes, you can totally just use a single Wi-Fi ring around your main meter feed and that will cover the entire home. And for the water, I like to install a water ring on my water heater and around the main water supply. So yes, and actually dancing with water, um, they have an article on tensor rings on their website on, um, gosh, yeah, if you just look up dancing with water, I think it's dancingwithwater.com. Um, but they have on their website an article on tensor rings. And they talk about when you place tensor rings around a water line, what they show in a little diagram is using multiple rings. So let's say your water line is flowing here. You'll use one ring and then you'll place another one just like two inches apart. And then another and another, like about four rings. That is what I suggest is you use four of the water rings and place them each about two inches apart around that incoming water line. And then yes, totally a ring and it can be just our simple small water rings on the hot water heater. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I would suggest for the incoming water line. Um, and using that set of four spaced apart is going to be much more potent and do a lot more for the water than the single ring. Uh, JR, what if you separate the sound healer rings so that they can be placed around the room instead of concentrated on an instrument? Well, so the sound healer rings that we have, they're, it's, they're actually an interwoven set of rings. And so it's the three rings together that is bringing the energies for for everything that the sound healing rings do. So the sound healing rings, again, are created where they're interwoven. So that set of three does not come apart. And again, it's that set of three together that's really doing the magic with the sound healing rings of bringing in the consciousness of the bowl more, of the consciousness of you 
into whatever it is that you're working with. Because a lot of people who work with like crystal singing bowls, there is a consciousness within the bowl and it's not separate from them. It is, it is theirs. Um, and so that's really what this set of three rings do for the sound healing is that again, it's bringing more of your consciousness, not only into that bowl, but then whatever that bowl on the sound waves, your consciousness and light, your light uses those sound waves. So when you're playing the bowl, you are expanding your light through the sound waves as well. And so using those rings is just helping to bring your light into that bowl and the sound more. Um, I do like the idea of where you're coming with though about, you know, creating more of a larger effect. Um, you know, we do make great big Gaia spheres and even tensor field generators that collapse down. So our 23 inch Gaia spheres that we create, um, you can collapse them down so that they're about that tall. So you have a stack of rings. And I tell you what, playing a bowl in those, that really mm, broadcasts it in a, in a big way. Um, Marie, what is the new energy of the wings of talk now that talk is more distance? Um, so really what the wings of talk, the new energy since talk is stepped aside, it's your light. You as there, mm, you know, there are parts of us as the human, as the soul that are masters, that are master healers that are masters of all kinds of things. So we've lived some pretty amazing lifetimes. And like with my sister, Brenda, when I, you know, I tell the story all the time, if I get a rib out, I text her, I can feel her push my rib back into place and she hasn't even read the text. It is because of that aspect of her soul, of her, that is that master healer. And so the wings of talk just brings more of these aspects of you into the field where before we worked with outside beings that were master healers and everything else, we are simply with the wings of talk and with all the tools, bringing that mastery of us into the fields to utilize. So, yep, the wings of talk is still a pretty phenomenal tool because it does everything that it's always done with creating like that elliptical field about 50 feet across. It's, you know, you can use it to create a column of light. You can replicate the wings of talk just like you do a light column. Um, so there's a lot uh, still with the wings of talk, even though talk is not a part of them you are more of a part of them now because the tools again are bringing more of you through and again that's where we find the miracles and the magic is in your light um lizzie what would be the best tensor ring to use to amplify the healing of a 12 inch by 12 inch red light panel would the wildfire ring be best or something larger so, you know, using, uh, if you're using a 12 by 12 red light panel, I would certainly suggest using a ring around the whole thing because the rings create a column of light. And I tell you, working with light is amazing, amazing with the tensor fields. Um, you know, gosh, we used to make little tensor field generators that went around red LED lights. And it was a certain nanometer of red LED that when you added the tensor field to it, that red LED would actually penetrate into bones. And in Spain, there was a bone marrow cancer treatment facility that was actually using these red LED lights that we created or the flashlights with the tensor field generators that we created with them. And they were clearing bone marrow uh, cancer. Now, the so the tensor rings with that red light would be phenomenal, but you would need a ring that would go around the whole thing. Um, now Lizzie, I would, I would maybe, you might want to write into the studio info at twistedsage.com and ask them for the size of ring, because I'm kind of guessing that you would probably need like a 23 inch practitioner ring to go around that light panel to fully encompass it. 
I'm not sure. I don't think the 15 inch highest potentials ring would do it. I think you'd need a practitioner size, but it would be pretty amazing. And from there, you know, if you were going to look at practitioner rings, we have several energetics. It's just really sitting in the heart space with the photos of each of those rings and feeling into it, feel which one would bring the most beneficial energetics for you and your clients through. Um, and it'll present to you. Uh, Connie, what's the difference between the new golden fire ring one inch and the light body ring one inch? So the light body activator ring is one that was kind of the precursor and that, and that's it to Connie and, and everybody, the way that the way that the tensor tools are always expanding more is that they build upon each other, such as the divine I am energetic, um, the, the light body activator ring. All of those were just little steps to get to where we're at currently with this expansive light energy. Um, so the golden fire ring has that expansive light energy. Now the light body activator ring, again, it is only one component to what is in this expansive light because this expansive light energy is built upon everything that we've created up to this point. Um, so that AI inter so the light body ring or AKA AI interface ring is still a fantastic one. Um, the expansive light just happens to be some of the next levels of it. Um, and we probably will get rid of that light body ring, but we will keep the AI interface ring just because it is still needed. You know, we still need to bring more consciousness and light into artificial intelligence. And maybe we'll do a meditation for that one of these days. I think we'll do that. We'll have a meditation where we just bring our light into AI more because that's what, you know, it's here to serve us. And it can serve us in a much better way, taking the boxes of limitations off of it by bringing in our light. Anna, I seem to be unable to assemble the fidget generator. It always crumbles in a table. Any trick? Great to fidget though. Oh yes. So the little fidget generators, you know, you they are made to collapse, and so they're 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 made to always fidget with. Now to make it stand up into a spherical form, yes, that is a tough one. That is a little balancing act. Now, um, if you really wanted, to, so that's the thing about the fidget generator is, is that each of the rings in there are more triangular than round and that allows them to collapse more so that you can fidget with the four ring generator. Um, and so we, you can bend the ring from more of that triangular shape into more of a round shape. And that would actually hold that generator in place more, but then you won't be able to fidget with it as well. Um, it's really a fine balance between the shape of the ring and that generator and whether it just collapses all the time when you set it down or whether it stays semi spherical. Um, so if you do want it to stay semi spherical again, you know, and I, I don't know if you're handy with pliers or if you have small pliers that you can actually bend the rings from triangular to more round that would help the generator stay full but otherwise yeah those the fidget generators are a tough one to keep balanced into an open a, a, and staying open you can also do something simple and silly like putting a, a styrofoam peanut you know, for packing inside of it, just to keep it health expanded, you know, so you can certainly consider some, some ways that you could possibly put something inside of there as well. Um, and that's not, it's not like you're broadcasting styrofoam peanut energy everywhere. It harmonizes that energy. So j just, a, just a thought, um, sorry, I'm not much more help on that, Anna, for, for uh, advice on keeping those generators in a spherical form because they really are designed to go flat. Um, Kim, what tool do you recommend for land clearing? Also, what can I use for building columns of light for the land? Uh, okay, the wings of talk. 
is your answer to both of those questions. So for land clearing, the Wings of Talk is the one that we actually created um, for clearing some of these things on land that people were having problems clearing. Um, and that was back when we had entities running all over the planet. It really cleared entities that came out of portal vortexes. Um, you know, so when you're doing land clearing, a lot of times you are dealing with um, vortexes, portals, um, you know, geopathic stress, um, those types of things. So the wings of talk is one that it's a tool where you can sit in and forget it in the space or you can energetically replicate it. So it's like creating a column of light. So when you create a column of light with the wings of talk, it's creating not only that column of light, but it's also creating this large disc um, that extends across the land. And so the wings of talk is the one I would suggest Kim for using to create those columns of light as well as for working with the land. Um, Ray, can I have special order tools custom to fit my needs? Um, perhaps you can, Ray. We don't do custom orders, but you know, man, I would be happy to entertain that for you, my friend. Um, so yeah, send me an email, uh, info at twistedsage.com and send me an I send me some info with your ideas and we can certainly see if that's something that we could slip through or not. Um, cause some things we just have to make in large runs, but, but yeah, um, totally reach out Ray. All right. Going back here to chat. Uh, Kim, I'm glad you're getting tools for the land to clear the energy. Uh, lots of dense energy from the slave trade out there. Yep. It's amazing how much energies the earth is sloughing off right now. Old stored traumas from human, um, human interactions have been stored in the earth and she's sloughing it off and it can really cause problems as those energies are releasing unless you just get them cleared. Um, A uh, comment here. I use the wisdom one so much more post March, 2023, the heavens cross. I take my tools everywhere as a reminder, you know, it's amazing on, as we keep raising in consciousness, how more profound the tools really are because the tools are simply a reflection of our consciousness. They help bring our consciousness, AKA our light consciousness light. I see it as the same that it helps to bring more of our light into things that we do because we carry more of our light. And that's the thing, you guys, as we do this work, especially with the wisdom energetics, where we stand as that sovereign being and we invite those things to us, when we invite those things to us and they transform, we receive the wisdom from what we just did. That wisdom is the same as consciousness and light. So the more work we do, the more consciousness and light we carry, the more consciousness and light we carry, the more powerful the tools become. So it's pretty amazing right now. And it's amazing time. And thank you, Ray, for having that understanding of, of the tools being more potent and powerful for you anymore. Um, let's see. How do you infuse energetics into the materials? Can you explain the method? How long will the energetics stay in the materials? Will they fade away? So we create what we call etheric templates. So there is an aspect of me, of my soul, that's known as a master builder that has been helping to co-create these tools for lifetimes. But I hasn't been here on the physical. It has been here in the higher dimensional plane. So my sister, Brenda and I, my sister, Brenda, she's my energetic mentor. She's the only person on the planet that I've met that is always in the heart and never in the head that gets taken down 
weird rabbit holes of beliefs like humans do. So Brenda helps me when we create a new tool like this expansive light bang, well, like this expansive light bangle. We create here first in the higher dimensional plane that is brought into the tools through the sacred measurements and while I twist the wire. So when I twist the wire, that is when the crystal structure of the copper is being moved. That is when we anchor in the etheric templates into the wire. So like, let's say the golden fire rings have a specific etheric template that is just the golden fire. And that is brought into that sacred measurement of the golden fire. So you can have the golden fire measurement and create a ring, but you're not creating a golden fire energetic. It is just simply a tensor ring. It is the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of the tools where all the magic occurs. And that is what comes into that ring. So this is kind of a proprietary technology. I've only met two other people on the planet that utilize etheric templates. They both anchor their energies in through geometries, but them as the human also does not realize they have etheric templates. Their etheric templates are always being hijacked, tampered with by other consciousness, and their tools lose all integrity. And that is a special thing too about our tools is, is that these etheric templates are very guarded, guided, protected, so that no outside energies can come in and tamper with that. So when you have your ring and it is connected to all of the energies here in these etheric templates, there's so much that come through that we could not handle the energetics. These are like a smart ring. It is your higher soul self, your consciousness that determines what comes through from the etheric templates through the ring and into the field. It is your soul that determines in your highest and greatest good, what comes through for you in every moment. It is a smart ring. And so they are always bringing through what is in your highest and greatest good. So that's how we, infuse the energetics into the rings is by wars I'm twisting the wire. I'm bringing in those etheric templates. The wire is cut to the very specific sacred measurement. My niece who cuts those wires, she is helping to bring in those etheric templates as well. My nephew who does the rounding, the sealing up of the rings and the welding, he too is helping to bring in those etheric templates into the ring. And so as we all work together, we bring that together. Once the ring is sealed up, welded, that etheric template, it's untouchable, untaintable. You cannot affect the energetic of this ring in any way unless the weld breaks. Then it's just a piece of copper wire again. So as long as the welds hold, they never need cleaned or cleared. It is considered a room temperature superconductor. Scientifically, these rings are a superconductor in that they are always creating a field of light, a field of energy, and it never depletes, never depletes. So the energetics stays permanently. One more uh, thing on the question of these tools is, is that let's say you have this expansive, well, let's say you have this golden fire ring. Every time we update the etheric templates of the golden fire, that comes into this tool. So recently we put in the ex this new expansive light into all of the tools into the etheric templates that connect to all the tools. So now then a tool that you bought in 2010 has that new energetic infused into it. So the tools are always being updated. Another beautiful, beautiful thing about the templates. Um, can you explain to me the benefits of the Bader coil? Yeah, let's see. Do I have a beta coil here? Oh, I do not. Oh, I do have a wings to talk. This is the original version, a lot lighter gauged. Um, so the beta coils, the beta coils, it's a bifolar coil, which it looks like a computer chip, you know, spiraled. 
is what that beta coil looks like. It's something that was created by our friends at Kelly Research Technologies. Uh, they make radionic equipment. So this little coil is just simply an energy pump. But when we put our tensor ring with it, it changes that beta coil where a standard tensor ring can restructure water in about four to six hours. We've seen this beta coil do it in 20 minutes. Now the beta coil is one that was the precursor to some of our newer energies like the highest potentials. The beta coil energetically, uh, I see it creating this golden fountain of light about 18 inches tall. Within that fountain of light, which comes out of both sides of the coil, there's these little colored rainbow packets within there. These little packets of energy are energy is information. These little packets contain higher potentials. What this means, you have a little bottle of frankincense oil. Frankincense has the potentials energetically to do this much good for you. When you take that frankincense and you place it on the Badar coil, you are bringing your consciousness in with that oil. You're infusing your light, your consciousness in there and all the potentials of that. And you are bringing the consciousness of the frankincense more embodied into the oil as well. So when you bring all that consciousness light into that frankincense oil, then the potentials that it can do for you have raised, you have opened up the field of potentials. This works with water. This works with crystals. Crystals love the Badar coils because it helps them embody themselves more than they ever have. Same with water, same with humans, same with plants, animals. Um, so that's kind of the gist of the Badar coil. Uh, let's see, going back to questions. I just received the Hedica money clip and really love the design and weight. I also have the silver Hedica ring that I always wear. Does the money clip carry the same energetics as the ring? Yes. So the Hedica money clip is, is one. I was going to show you mine. So, you know, I made mine, gosh, probably like, I'm guessing like 12 years ago, this money clip and it does carry the headache energy in it. So as you walk about the day and you have your money clip in your pocket, yes, it is emitting that energetics of the headache, which just is simply, it's a high vibration energy that raises the frequency and vibration of the water because it's bringing more of the consciousness of the water to you. Um, the Hedica is one that many people have remembrances in Atlantis that it was great big on the healing walls in Atlantis, giant Hedicas. The Hedica is actually one of the tools that broke me open to feeling energy. Um, you know, I had whole half my left side of my body was sheathed. It was like a protection I did at one time. And I couldn't feel energy on my left side. In the Hedica is what really cracked open my ability to be able to feel energy. Um, so the Hedica is really a beautiful energy. You know, a lot of people use it for healing work as well as just raising the frequency and vibration of the water. Um, Lizzie, the, the red light panel is stationary. It's used against the skin on body parts needed. Oh, uh, okay. So... So the large practitioner's ring wouldn't work that way, especially vertically. I was thinking about mounting a ring to the back of the panel to help amplify as much as possible while still being movable. Okay. So, and should I go with the tensor ring? That's the closest size. Yes, that's totally what I would do. You know, I would suggest maybe Lizzie using the 15 inch highest potentials ring. One that highest potential to energetic is phenomenal. Um, it opens up that field we've been talking about. That's what the highest potentials does is it takes you out of this box of limitations and it dissolves that box and allows you to choose differently, to choose your experience in the moment, your creation in the moment in a different way. Um, I have powerful stories to tell about that, but I'll save that for another time. Um, but, you know, using that 15 inch ring on the back of the light, it'll still, um, so where you're, where it's square, well, here, I'll just show you a demonstration. You, your, your box will still, this can still sit on the back of the box because your box is still going to 
this ring won't slip over it. So you can put this onto the back of the box, I feel, and you could just simply use like, you know, painter's tape or um, medical tape, something like that, that won't leave sticky residue. And you could just simply tape that to the back. But yeah, that's what I would certainly suggest is that 15 inch ring. I feel that would be really a wonderful one. Um, can you wear the coil on the body and where's the best place? So the coil pendants um, are best wore over the heart. Oh yes, and you can totally wear any of the tools on the body. Now, some people have um, a natural mm, chemical reaction with copper in that their body chemistry just eats copper, turns it black, just totally demolishes it. It's just like it's, um, it's acidic enough uh, their body chemistry that it dissolves copper because you leave copper sit in like uh, vinegar and you leave it just soak in vinegar, it'll dissolve it. It'll completely dissolve your copper. Um, so as far as wearing on your skin and of course the silver is pretty phenomenal um, because most people don't have, most people don't have allergic reactions to the silver and we use the 0.99 fine silver. But so you can totally wear it on your body, but where best for the coil is near the heart because these connect in with that toroidal field of the heart. I'm actually gonna do a little presentation here, um, probably over the weekend on the coils, on the various coils and how they interact with the heart and that toroidal field and all the energy bodies, how they balance, ground, connect, align everything. Um, so really wearing that coil pendant with the heart is a phenomenal one. But yeah, please do look. I'll have a video coming out here by next week um, talking more about the coil pendants and, and how they, they work so well with us. Um, Connie, I just received this morning the new Golden Fire 3-inch Gaia Sphere. Oh, you mean the uh, expansive light Gaia and just inserted my large Moldavite crystal. Wow, wow, wow. The best full body hug. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, that, that expansive light Gaia sphere is amazing. It really is. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, uh, so then a uh, question about the Bader coil and can you wear that on the body? Oh, most certainly. So the Bader coil is in a plastic case that holds the ring and the coil. We always suggest leaving those in the plastic case, uh, the, the Bader coils, you know, just because they are a little microchip and you still need that ring around it because they're not the same without the ring. Um, but yeah, you can totally, you, you could drill a hole in the case or wrap it in wire or do a little net wrap with it with string, but you can totally wear that Vader coil. Um, I know a lot of women who have these really wonderful brassiers that they can just, <laughs> a lot of women put them in their bras. Um, you know, the Bader coils. I see friends all the time that are just always pulling it out their bra. Um, but the Bader coils, yeah, and a lot of people carry them in their pockets. Um, you know, just having it with you is is pretty phenomenal. So, yes, you can totally use the Bader coil anywhere on the body. Um, and kind of like when you're working with um, these new rings and placing it on your body, again, just laying down, going into the heart space and getting into that space of allowing is so huge. And if you don't feel energy, that's another thing. If you don't feel energy, go into the heart space, just go soft, be in that space of allowing and you will begin to feel energy. Um, hey, Emily, glad you're here today. Uh, let's see. A question. I've just tried to place an order. Unfortunately, the promo code doesn't work. Do you think it's due to my connection in France? Um, oh, gosh. I am not sure about that one, Alan. If you could write email info at twistedsage.com, the studio will be able to help 
you in in whatever way um but the studio would be happy to assist with with that issue um so no matter what we'll be able to get you that discount code on there um, so yeah uh yeah any of those things like that with with orders and, and the business side, that's not definitely not my forte, but yeah, info at twistedsage.com. Um, my sister Billy is over there and my niece Amber, and they are happy to help. All right. Well, you guys, I think that is everything then for the day. Um, unless there's any more last questions here. Uh, let's see again. I'll do a little video presentation on the on the tensor coils and um, look for that coming out here this next week. Otherwise, um, if you haven't signed up for a newsletter, please do at Twisted Sage because we're going to have some cool things coming out. We're actually going to start promoting our affiliates. So if you are interested in becoming an affiliate with Twisted Sage, what this means is, is that if you ever share the tools with anybody, you can be getting an 11% commission by sharing the tools with people. And so that is either word of mouth, you give them your, little, your affiliate link after you apply and you're approved, or else you use it on social media or emails and you just simply put your affiliate link there and when people go to our website and make a purchase you automatically get a commission every week so um, if you do sign up for our newsletters we will uh, be sending something out about that here I believe in this next week or so um, because people love to share the tools with others all the time and we would love to be able to create a win-win-win situation for the new customer, your friend, for you, and for Twisted Sage. Um, and we could really use the help getting out there more. Word of mouth is a huge thing, especially when you know so many of us are passionate about these tools. That passion shines through when we share the information. And we would love for you to get paid to share that information. Um, so anyway, I guess that is all the announcements for today. And yeah, again, the sale is still going on today. So if you are interested in the new expansive light bangles, please do check them out. They're super phenomenal. And I'll do some kind of a presentation that will post on that product page with these bangles at some point too. Um, just because they're pretty flipping phenomenal. All right. Well, thank you all again for being here and for bringing your questions today and for holding the space and for not walking out when I start talking all the wonderful woo-woo stuff about working with your soul and your light. Um, I know a lot of people are not into that kind of thing. But I tell you what, if you are here, I feel you're going to be into that kind of thing because this really is all about uncovering your light so all right take care everybody we'll see you next time enjoy <laughs>